One of the great targets is the heart. I'm not talking about the physical heart, though they are connected. I'm talking about the, the heart vortex within the human energy field. Um, the heart chakra or wheel of light, as they call it in the East. And, and you know, we think of love in a certain way, uh, being attracted to somebody or loving your kids. But actually, what I'm talking about, and I talk about this a lot in The Answer, it's very different. It includes that, of course. But, but, but love in its true sense does not say, I want the best for my kids, although we do, of course we do. It says I want the best for everybody. Um, and when you open this, it's not just love in the sense that people perceive it. It opens you to infinity. It's our connection to all that is, has been and ever can be. And through that connection, you um, have insight, you have um, knowing. This is, this, when people have intuitive knowing, where do their hands go? Look, mate, I just know, I just know. This knows, because it does know, because it's connected to that which does know. And when you open your heart, you're opening your connection to a level of awareness that allows you, first of all, to see the connections, because you're coming from that level where everything is one, therefore you can see the connections in the reality you're experiencing. But one definition I would give for this kind of love is the absence of fear. I would call evil the absence of love. I think that's what evil is, it's the absence of love. You infuse um, love into evil, it's not evil anymore. It's the absence of love. And this is what this cult is, it's the absence of love. That's why it does what it does. But it's also the absence of fear. Because once you, once you open to this insight, this self-identity, you know there's nothing to fear. Because whatever happens, whatever experiences we're having, there'll be another one along in a minute. We are always an expression, a point of attention within all that is, has been and ever can be. And however bad the experience we're currently having, that is what we always are. All that is, has been and ever can be. And so um, this does not fear. This will always do what it knows to be right and therefore does not consider consequences for doing what it knows to be right because it would never consider doing anything but what it knows to be right. Thus, consequences are irrelevant. This says, I'd like to do this, but what are the consequences? And you'll always find a list of consequences why you wouldn't do it. This says, I do what I know to be right. Consequences, therefore, are not even a conversation. And one of the great fears that people have, uh, well, it's the foundation fear, I think, is the fear of the unknown, which manifests as the fear of death. And the manipulation of the fear of death is, is the manipulation of this pandemic where people have been frozen in fear because they fear death. That's why doctors have so much power. Well, actually, you are all that is, has been, and ever can be, and always will be. You're just having a brief experience. So this is without fear. It doesn't consider consequences. What I, what I mean by that is it, it, it knows that if you cross the road in front of a, of a truck, you're going to get damaged. But I mean, consequences of what will people do or think or say about me, what will happen to me uh, for doing what I know to be right, doesn't even consider those consequences. I never consider them. Because to consider them is to consider not doing what I know to be right, not, not having it. Because you reach this point of connection and this point of insight, you know, and I'm not sitting cross-legged on a mountain like a Buddha. Anyone can do this, it's unnatural state. We're being manipulated into an unnatural state. This is what I'm describing is a natural state. Um, when, when, you, um, when you open your heart, you know that death 
is nothing except a transfer of attention. That's all it is. I've got a picture in, in the answer, and it's of a, a, a bloke um, with a, a headset, you know, a virtual reality headset, and he's just taking it off and looking around. And I've put a caption underneath, my God, I've just died. Because that is what death is, basically. It's taking the headset off. It's, it's um, moving out of this brief experience into the expansive true self. So when you open this, all this comes to you. You know all this. And therefore, this would never, never be intimidated by authority seeking to impose itself upon you when you know it's not justified and it's about destroying your freedom. This is freedom. It's the freedom of knowing that, that, that the scale of who we really are. It's the freedom of connecting with all that is. I tell you, when, if, if, when there's a revolution of this, acquiescence will stop. This would never acquiesce to impositions on freedom. Never do it. Always do, does what it knows to be right. This is the revolution. Um, and the heart is the center of everything. And people talk about the physical heart, okay. But, but, but if you go back, what they're really talking about is this heart, the energetic heart, um, the connection out there. And you look at all the things, all the symbolism through the ages and still today relating to this. Open heart, heart of stone, broken heart. All the, you look at all the, the phrases relating to the heart and, and it's because this is the center of everything. And we, we've been manipulated to think this is the center of everything, it's not. Do you know that the heart is the, the biggest electromagnetic field, most powerful electromagnetic field in the body? And this, when it's open, um, dominates the head. What do people say all the time? What does your head say? Okay, what does your heart say? And they say very different things, because this is out there and this is down here. And uh, when this opens, everything uh, changes because you change. Everything about you changes. It's what happened to me a long time ago and um, changed my life. And everyone can access this whenever they want. Any anytime they want. Um, and, and what I would say is ditch the bloody labels. Stop identifying with labels. They are a brief experience. Even your name is a brief experience. You are the consciousness having the experience. So when someone says to you, who are you? You are all that is, has, has been and ever can be having an experience. What you call yourself, if, if, when you, if, you, if you meet someone and, and people say, well, who are you? They'll give you their name, they'll give you their job, they might give you their family background, their, their family history, where they went to school. That's what they're saying they are. Who are you? But that's just what they've experienced. Who am I? All that is, has been and ever can be. Having an experience called David Icke. Very brief, very interesting. The point of attention that I am is an expression of the same consciousness that the point of attention that you are is. And the same with all of us. So racism and all these isms and all these divisions, not only undesirable, they are confirmation that those that go down that road are utterly clueless about the nature of reality and the nature of who they really are. And um, I see anti-racists who are utterly, utterly obsessed with race uh, when it's just a brief experience. That's all it is. You are what is having the experience. And when, we, when that penny drops and this, as a result, opens, game over.